All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, happy uh, Lord's Day. It is July the 21st, and uh, we are reading about, about Hezekiah. And if you remember, Assyria uh, has been um, attacking and uh, is threatening to, uh, to come in, and it's laying siege to uh, Judah. Hezekiah has been seeking the Lord and seeking the Lord's help. And so what, we'll see what happens here. Uh, with uh, with Judah, uh, with the Assyrians, okay? Uh, 2 Kings 19, when Hez King Hezekiah heard their report, he tore his clothes and put on burlap and went into the temple of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shebna, the court secretary, and the leading priests, all dressed in burlap, to the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amoz. And they told him, this is what King Hezekiah says, today is a day of trouble, insults, and disgrace. It is like when a child is ready to be born, but the mother has no strength to deliver the baby. But perhaps the Lord your God has heard the Assyrian chief or of staff sent by the king to defy the living God and will punish him for his words. Oh, pray for those of us who are left. After King Hezekiah's officials delivered the king's message to Isaiah, the prophet replied, say to your master, this is what the Lord says. Do not be disturbed by this blasphemous speech against me from the Assyrian king's messengers. Listen, I myself will move against him, and the king will receive a message, message that he is in, needed at home. So he will return to his land where I will have him killed with the sword. And that's what happens. You'll see, we're going to read it here in a minute. He's assassinated uh, when he goes back. And so here he has these plans, right, to attack Hezekiah. And he comes against him and says, who of all of the nations, what God has ever saved the nations that we've crushed by our hands? And, and, and so, and he says to the people of, of Israel, uh, right, to, of Judah, uh, when he sends his envoys there, he remember he sp spoke to them in Hebrew, and he, and he declared to him, don't let Hezekiah convince you that your God is able to save you. And so here he spoke really boastfully against God, and God has the ability to remove anybody. God is the ability to, uh, to you know, put uh, these plans that King Assyria had uh, to actually, you know, wipe him out. And remember that if you, if you have these moments where you're concerned, listen, God can remove people easily enough. And so let's jump back in. Meanwhile, the Assyrian chief of staff left Jerusalem and went to consult the king of Assyria who had left Kate Lachish and was attacking Libna. And soon afterward, King Sennacherib received word that King uh, Tur Teherica of Ethiopia was leading an army to fight against him. Before leaving to meet the attack, he sent messengers back to Hezekiah in Jerusalem with this message. This message is for King Hezekiah of Judah. Don't let your God, in whom you trust, deceive you with promises that Jerusalem will not be captured by the king of Assyria. You know perfectly well what the kings of Assyria have done wherever they've gone. They've completely destroyed everyone who stood in their way. Why should you be any different? Have the gods of other nations rescued them, such as nations of Gazan, Haran, Rezeph, and the people of Eden who were in Tel Asar? My predecessors destroyed them all. What happened to the king of Hamath and the king of Arpad? What happened to the kings of Sepharavim and Hena and Iva? After Hezekiah received a letter from the messengers and read it, he went up to the Lord's temple, spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed this prayer before the Lord. O Lord, God of Israel, you are enthroned between the mighty cherubim. You alone are God of all the kingdoms of the earth. You alone created the heavens and the earth. Bend down, O Lord, and listen. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Listen to Sennacherib's words of defiance against the living God. It is true, Lord, that the kings of Assyria have destroyed all these nations, and they have thrown the gods of these nations into the fire and burned them. But, of course, the Assyrians could destroy them. They were not gods at all. Only idols of wood and stone shaped by human hands. Now, O Lord, our God, rescue us from his power. Then all the kingdoms of the earth will know that you alone, O Lord, are God. Isaiah 30, 37, jump over to Isaiah. Remember, so Hezekiah sends word to Isaiah saying, please pray for us. Those who are left who have not run off and are afraid of what Assyria is going to do, pray for us. Now, Isaiah, Isaiah 37 when King Hezekiah heard their report, he tore his clothes and put on burlap and went into the temple of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shebna, the court secretary, and the leading priests, all dressed in burlap, to the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos. They told him, this is what King Hezekiah says. Uh, Today is a day of trouble. 
insults and disgrace. It is like when a child is ready to be born, but the mother has no strength to deliver the baby. <clears throat> but perhaps the Lord your God has heard the Assyrian chief of staff sent by the king to defy the living God and will punish him for his words. Oh, pray for those of us who are left. After King Hezekiah's officials delivered the king's message to Isaiah, the prophet replied, say to your master, this is what the Lord says. Do not be disturbed by this blasphemous speech against me from the Assyrian king's messengers. Listen, I myself will move against him and the king will receive a message that he is needed at home. So he will return to his land where I will have him killed with the sword. Meanwhile, the Assyrian chief of staff left Jerusalem and went to consult the king of Assyria who had left Lachish and was attacking Libna. Soon afterward, King Sennacherib received word that King Teherica of Ethiopia was leading an army to fight against him. Before leaving to meet the attack, he sent messengers back to Hezekiah in Jerusalem with this message. This message is for King Hezekiah of Judah. Don't let your God in whom you trust deceive you with promises that Jerusalem will not be captured by the king of Assyria. You know perfectly well what the kings of Assyria have done wherever they've gone. They've completely destroyed everyone who stood in their way. Why should you be any different? Have the gods of other nations rescued them, such nations as Gazan, Haran, Rezeph, and the people of Eden who were in Tel Asar? My predecessors destroyed them all. What happened to the king of Hamath and the king of Arpad? What happened to the kings of Sepharavim, Hena, and Iba? Afterward, after Hezekiah received the letter from the messengers and read it, he went up to the Lord's temple and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed this prayer before the Lord. O Lord of heaven's armies, O God of Israel, you are enthroned between the mighty cherubim. You alone are God of all the kingdoms of the earth. You alone created the heavens and the earth. Bend down, O Lord, and listen. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Listen to Sennacherib's words of defiance against the living God. It is true, Lord, that the kings of Assyria have destroyed all these nations, and they have thrown the gods of these nations into the fire and burned them. But of course, the Assyrians could destroy them. They were not gods at all, only idols of wood and stone shaped by human hands. Now, O Lord, our God, rescue us from this power. Then all the kingdoms of the earth will know that you alone, O Lord, are God. Jump over to Second Chronicles 32, verses 9 through 19. When King Sennacherib of Assyria was still besieging the town of Lachish, he sent his officers to Jerusalem with this message from Hezekiah and all the people in the city. This is what King Sennacherib of Assyria says. What are you trusting in that makes you think you, will, you can survive my siege of Jer Jerusalem? Hezekiah has said, the Lord our God will rescue us from the king of Assyria. Surely Hezekiah is misleading you, sentencing you to death by famine and thirst. Don't you realize that Hezekiah is the very person who destroyed all the Lord's shrines and altars? He commanded Judah and Jerusalem to worship only at the altar, at the temple, and to offer sacrifices on it alone. Surely you must realize what I and the other kings of Assyria before me have done to all the people of the earth. Where Were any of the gods of those nations able to rescue their people from my power? Which of their gods was able to rescue its people from their destructive power of my predecessors? What makes you think your God can rescue you from me. Don't let Hezekiah deceive you. Don't let him fool you like this. I say it again, no God of any nation or kingdom has ever yet been able to rescue his people from me or my ancestors. How much less will your God rescue you from my power? And so just pause here for a moment. So, so now King Sennacherib goes on this uh, campaign uh, of, of trying to, to you know, go in and convince the people to revolt against Hezekiah, convince the people to open the doors and let him in, uh, to surrender. And so he goes on this campaign of, uh, of basically, you know, tearing Hezekiah down in the eyes of the people, but also trying to, you know, this campaign of fear that he's trying to place in, in, in them, saying they're gonna thirst and they're gonna starve to death and uh, tries to convince them to, uh, you know, to be afraid and to surrender. And uh, so he's, he is attempting a number of ways. Uh, so this isn't just a physical attack. This is a mental, emotional attack. Uh, this, is, uh, this is terrorism um, at, at the height of its, uh, you know, of, of uh, you know, what King, King Sennacherib is, the height of his, um, you know, control and, uh, and reign of terror. Um, and, and so verse 16, um, and Sennacherib's officers further mocked the Lord God. 
and his servant Hezekiah. Keeping insult upon insult, the king also sent letters scorning the Lord, the God of Israel. And he wrote, just as the gods of all the other nations failed to rescue their people from my power, so the God of Hezekiah will also fail. The Assyrian officials who brought the letters shouted this in Hebrew to the people gathered on the walls of the city, trying to terrify them so it would be easier to capture the city. And these officers talked about the God of Jerusalem as though he were one of the pagan gods made by human hands. And again, that's that's part of the problem is, is the king of Assyria, Sennacherib, he had no real idea when he, when he says, Hezekiah, he tore down your, your altars and your shrines of your gods. Uh, when in actuality, I mean, he was misinformed because, you know, those were really not their gods. The, the God of Israel was Hezekiah had done the right thing and saying, we are not worshiping the idols. We're not worshiping these false gods. We are going to worship the one true God. And so he tries to actually use that against Hezekiah as well. Uh, tries to uh, to use his righteous acts and, and using that to turn the people against Hezekiah as well. And uh, and then they try to they they send letters. So they're so they're sending messages out, uh, you know, campaign, you know, uh, trying to try to convince the people to uh, to let them in. All right. Second Kings 19, verse 20. Jump right over Second Kings. Um, Isaiah, the prophet, he predicts uh, Judah's deliverance from Assyria. So then Isaiah, son of Amoz, sent this message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I have heard your prayer about King Sennacherib of Assyria, and the Lord has spoken this word against him. The virgin daughter of Zion despises you and laughs at you. The daughter of Jerusalem shakes her head in derision as you flee. Whom have you been defying and ridiculing? Against whom did you raise your voice? At whom did, did you look with such haughty eyes? It was the Holy One of Israel. By your messengers, you have defied the Lord. You have said with my many chariots, I have conquered the highest mountains, yes, the remotest peaks of Lebanon. I have cut down its tallest cedars and its finest cypress trees. I have reached its farthest corners and explored its deepest forests. I have dug wells in many foreign lands and refreshed myself with their water. With the sole of my foot, I stopped up all the rivers of Egypt. But have you not heard? I decided this long ago. Long ago, I planned it. And now I'm making it happen. I planned for you to crush fortified cities into heaps of rubble. That is why their people have so little power and are so frightened and confused. They're as weak as grass, as easily trampled as tender green shoes. They're like grass sprouting on a housetop, scorching scorched before it can grow lush and tall but i know you well where you stay and when you come and go <laughs> i know the way you have raged against me and because of your raging against me and your arrogance which i have heard for myself i will put a hook in your nose and my bit in your mouth i will make you return by the same road on which you came and then isaiah said to Hezekiah, here's the proof that what I say is true. This year, you will eat only what grows up by itself. And next year, you will eat what springs up from that. But in the third year, you will plant crops and harvest them. You will tend vineyards and eat their fruit. And you who are left in Judah, who have escaped the ravages of the siege, will put roots down in your own soil and will grow up and flourish. For a remnant of my, of my people will spread out from Jerusalem, a group of survivors from, from Mount Zion. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. And this is what the Lord says about the king of Assyria. His armies will not enter Jerusalem. They will not even shoot an arrow at it. They will not march outside its gates with their shields, nor build banks of earth against its walls. The king will return to his own country by the same road on which he came. And he will not enter this city, says the Lord, for my own honor and for the sake of my servant David. I will defend this city and protect it. And that night the angel of the Lord went out to the Assyrian camp and killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. And when the, uh, the surviving Assyrians woke up the next morning, they found corpses everywhere. And then King Sennacherib of Assyria broke camp and returned to his own land. He went home to his capital of Nineveh 
and stayed there. One day while he was worshiping in the temple of his god, Misrach, his sons, Adremelech and Sharizer, killed him with their swords. They then escaped to the land of Ararat, and another son, Ersahadon, became the king, the next king of Assyria. I guess that solves that, doesn't it? God sets in, sets a plague, whatever. I mean, we're not quite sure. It doesn't say how. But he says that night an angel of the Lord, look at verse 35, went out to the Assyrian camp and killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. Just like that. He turns around and he heads home. Goes home. His two sons eventually uh, assassinate him. So uh, God takes care of that moment. Uh, the Assyrian king made a big mistake. Sennacherib made a huge mistake in, in, in being arrogant about all of the, um, the conquest that he had made. And God says, I, I planned all of that. I planned it. I used you to bring these nations to, to pound them down into rubble because I, I wanted them crushed. But don't think of yourself higher than who you really are and what you are. You're simply my instrument of judgment against these people who were uh, terrible, terrible, wicked people. But now Assyria, now King Sennacherib, you are going to, um, you're going to be stopped. Don't think by your own arrogance that you can do whatever it is that you want to do. And it's interesting. It's while he is in the temple of his false gods that God, um, that his sons come in and assassinate him while he's actually in the temple. All right. And so uh, then his son becomes the, the, the next king. And notice also where, where this is the Assyrian camp, the capital city is what? All right. We're going to get around to that. His home to the capital city of Nineveh. All right. So the capital city of Nineveh is, is I mean, the capital city of Assyria is Nineveh. And um, later on, if you remember, God sends Jonah in to, um, God wants Jonah to go in and to preach to uh, to the Ninevites. So the whole book of Jonah is about how God wants the Ninevites to repent and to turn to him. And uh, Jonah doesn't want to go. Right? Jonah doesn't want to go. Why? Because he, he hates the Assyrians. And uh, so it'll be an interesting, you know, when we get around to read that. Okay, Isaiah 37. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent this message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Because you prayed about King Sennacherib of Assyria, the Lord has spoken this word against him. The virgin daughter of Zion despises you and laughs at you. The daughter of Jerusalem shakes her head in derision as you flee. Whom have you been defying and ridiculing? Against whom did you raise your voice? At whom did you look at such haughty eyes? It was, was the Holy One of Israel. By your messengers, you have defied the Lord. You have said with my many chariots, I've conquered the highest mountains. Yes, the remotest peaks of Lebanon. I've cut down its tallest cedars and its finest cypress trees. I've reached its farthest heights and explored its deepest forests. I've dug wells in many foreign lands and refreshed myself with their water. With the sole of my foot, I stopped up all the rivers of Egypt. But have you not heard? I decided this long ago. Long ago, I planned it, and now I'm making it happen. I planned for you to crush fortified cities into heaps of rubble. That is why their people have so little power and are so frightened and confused. They are as weak as grass, as easily trampled as tender green shoots. They are like grass sprouting on a housetop, scorched before it can grow lush and tall. But I know you well, where you stay and when you come and go. I'm going to pause there for a moment. That statement, again, I, I underlined it just a little bit ago when we were reading this same thing out of Second Kings, because Second Kings records the same exact thing here that Isaiah records, right? But I love that statement that that God says through Isaiah to Sennacherib, where he says, you've done all these things, but I know you well. Listen, I know where you stay when you come 
And when you go, what do you think God was saying to Sennacherib there? It's like, listen, Sennacherib, you, you can't escape me. I know where you're at. I know where you stay. I know where, where you come and where you go. And I'm going to make sure that there's somebody there that's going to take care of you. <laughs> that's powerful. Wow. Um, I know the way you've raged against me. And because of your raging against me and your arrogance, which I have heard from myself, I will put a hook in your nose and my bit in your mouth, and I will make you return by the same road on which you came. And then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, here's the proof that what I say is true. This year you will eat only what grows up by itself. The next year you will eat what springs up from that. And in the third year, you will plant crops and harvest them. You will tend vineyards and eat the, their fruit. And you who are left in Judah, who have escaped the ravages of the siege, will put roots down in your own soil and grow up and flourish. For a remnant of my people will spread out from Jerusalem, a group of survivors from Mount Zion. The passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. I'm grateful that we have a God who has a passionate commitment, right? Um, and this is what the Lord says about the king of Assyria. His armies will not enter Jerusalem. They will not even shoot an arrow at it. They will not march outside its gates with their shields, nor build banks of earth be before, you know, against its walls. The king will return to his own country by the same road on which he came. He will not enter this city, says the Lord. For my honor and for my sake, the sake of my servant David, I will defend this city and protect it. And that night, the angel of the Lord went out to the Assyrian camp and killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. When the surviving Assyrians woke up the next morning, they found corpses everywhere. Then King Sennacherib of Assyria broke camp and returned to his own land. He went home to his capital of Nineveh and stayed there. One day, while he was worshiping in the temple of his god near Srak, his sons Adrelmelech and Sherezer killed him with their swords. They then escaped to the land of Ararat, and another son, Irsa Hadon, became the next king of Assyria. Okay, jump over to Second Chronicles 32. That's another history book, Second Chronicles 32, 20. Then the king of Hezekiah, the king Hezekiah, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, cried out in prayer to God in heaven. And the Lord sent an angel who destroyed the Assyrian army with all its commanders and officers. So Sennacherib was forced to return home in disgrace to his own land. And when he returned, when he entered the temple of his God, some of his own sons killed him there with a sword. That is how the Lord rescued Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem from King Sennacherib of Assyria and from all the others who threatened them. So there was peace throughout the land. From then on, King Hezekiah became highly respected among all the surrounding nations and many gifts for the Lord arrived at Jerusalem with, with valuable presents for King Hezekiah too. All right, so King Hezekiah does a great job there, right? He realizes he had to reach out to God. He cries out to God. I think there are just so many great lessons that we can learn, one of which is, uh, you know, even when people are, are really arrogant and uh, they shake their fist at heaven and they try to intimidate people around them saying, you know, who is, who is the Lord, your God? Who is this God of yours? God is able to fully, fully uh, defend himself and defend his people. God is able to do it. And we can trust him with our very lives. All right. Well, let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for uh, God. Just the, the reminder that we have today, that Lord, that though the nations uh, plot, they plot in vain against you. They shake their fist against you. They rise up in arrogance, um, believing that, uh, that the power that they have has been uh, bestowed on them uh, by themselves in their own wisdom, in their own ability. But Lord, you are the God of all the nations, God. And uh, Lord, we, we honor you. And uh, Lord, um, help us to fully put our trust in you, God, no matter what happens, no matter what uh, is said or done, Lord, help your people, help a remnant of people, God, to cry out to you in prayer and to believe you, Lord, because God, even when the odds are against us, Lord, you are greater than all of the odds. I pray that, Lord, over your people today that are reading with me, Lord, that whatever the odds are against them, help them to know, Lord, that, God, you are greater than all of the odds, that you're greater, Lord. So, Lord, we declare uh, your glory. We declare your power. We declare your victory over our lives and over our circumstances. Uh, Lord, we thank you. We love you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, 
thank you for joining me. You know, again, I hope that uh, you you were able to take some time and enjoy uh, being with other other believers today. Um, you know, in worship, what an incredible opportunity we have every week to recharge our spiritual batteries and uh, to be prepared uh, to face another week. Um, no matter what it is that we face, we've got a God that is greater. All right, God bless you. I hope you have a really, really great day.